Welcome everyone to my very favorite uh, day of every semester, the Digital Marketers Graduation Party. My name is Dan Grant. I'm the CEO and founder uh, of BizHack Academy. And uh, I'm so honored uh, to be here today to celebrate the amazing entrepreneurs and business owners and thought leaders that have gone through uh, our uh, programs. Uh, this is actually a very special day for BizHack as well, because for the past seven years, uh, we have had graduation celebrations for one uh, course, our uh, flagship course, the Digital Marketer's Edge. Uh, today is our first dual graduation to include uh, our second flagship course, the LinkedIn Business Edge. And it's just such an honor uh, to be able to have this dual graduation ceremony. It's also going to be a treat for all of you uh, who've gone through one or the other of the course to see the extraordinary entrepreneurs and uh, business owners who've been uh, in parallel going through a similar uh, journey, uh, challenging and demanding and hopefully uh, life and career and business transforming. A lot of you guys know me. My name is uh, Dan Gretsch. I'm a business storyteller. Uh, I spent most of my career as a journalist, uh, got a master's degree in storytelling, and then about a decade ago, transitioned into business storytelling, which is perhaps a, a fancy way of saying marketing. Uh, I worked as a marketer at a large company, a billion dollar energy company, and at a number of small companies to B2B SaaS startups, always in the B2B space. Um, and over the years, uh, have learned digital marketing by teaching it. And so in, uh, seven years ago, I started teaching a course at Miami Dade College. It was the first digital marketing course for business owners. I did that for three years as a side gig while working as the head of growth for a startup. And then uh, came to realize that I liked teaching marketing more than I liked working as a marketer for a startup. So I left that company and started BizHack uh, and have been uh, doing that now for four years with great love and relish. And there's no day I love more than graduation day. The day when um, all of the hard work, all the sweat, all the toil, all the challenge, all the frustration, uh, hopefully come to a place where your learning journey uh, has reached a new plateau uh, and where you're ready to embrace the challenge of digital marketing in a much more systematic uh, way. Um, I did, uh, we, we've done a lot of work um, around uh, town and around South Florida where we're based with local universities, local uh, business support organizations. We're extremely proud uh, to be a supporter of women and minority owned businesses. We've been a mentor in the Babson Win Lab for women entrepreneurs. Uh, we've been a presenter uh, at the Florida uh, State Minority Supplier Development Council. Uh, we ourselves are a proudly Hispanic owned business. My father is from Spain and I'm Hispanic. Um, and we've won a lot of awards for this work from places like the American Marketing Association, uh, the Miami Herald Startup Pitch Competition, and so forth. A lot of you guys know a little bit about my story and my why, why we do what we do. Uh, this is an important part of how we teach marketing, leadership, and business ownership. My why is that I am the son of educators and coaches, and that's a picture of me and my mother uh, uh, when I was a little baby. And my mom was a public school art teacher. My dad was a, my soccer coach growing up. My mom's dad, my grandfather on my mom's side, was also a public school teacher. He taught physics at Central High School, the second oldest high school in the country. My dad's dad, my paternal grandfather, was a coach in La Liga, the professional league in Spain. So from both sides of my family, my mom's and my dad's, it's all coaches and teachers all the way down. Now, my path was a little different. Uh, I was a journalist. You can see me there as a young man. But what I did find is that I always was attracted to the hard luck cases, the voiceless, the folks who didn't have the advantages uh, that I had growing up. And uh, I came to realize that that was something that I had inherited from my parents, the, the love of the underdog. And I did it as a journalist. I didn't cover celebrities or politicians. I covered uh, folks at uh, inner city schools uh, that my mom used to teach at, uh, immigrants, uh, poor folks. And then when I started a business, I don't serve 
the Fortune 500 companies. I serve the small business, the entrepreneur, the person who's uh, scraping and striving to make a better life for themselves, their family, and their teams. And it's the honor of a lifetime, guys, for me to be doing this work. And I am honoring uh, a multi-generational legacy uh, of the Gretchen Marcus family. And it's really, you know, incredibly meaningful for me to be here today and to be celebrating with you. Enough about me. Today is all about you. This is about celebrating the amazing folks who've gone through our two cohorts. We have on one side the lead catchers and on the other side the link fluencers. These are the names that they gave themselves. We have a tradition of always giving our cohorts names uh, that they give to themselves in these beautiful logos that were designed by our team. Uh, congratulations, lead catchers and link fluers, link, link fluencers, cohort 19 of the Digital Marketers Edge and Cohort 1 uh, of the LinkedIn Business Edge. I did want to quickly uh, welcome our lead instructors. Uh, we have Alex Oliveira, uh, the CEO and founder of Predict Media, a lead generation firm that has generated more than 23 million leads over the course of their work with 3,000 businesses. He's the lead instructor of the Digital Marketers Edge and the amazing Cheryl Patel, uh, lead instructor of the LinkedIn Business Edge. Cheryl Cattell has a nearly 30-year uh, uh, track record in marketing for companies big and small in every industry, B2B, B2C. She also has been one of the most important figures in South Florida in terms of supporting other marketers, founding the South Florida Integrated Marketing Association and helping lead that organization for years. Cheryl, it's fantastic to have been working with you on LinkedIn uh, LBE 1.0. We also have just the best group of coaches, right, everybody? This is a great moment for those of you who've appreciated Ricardo, Tatiana, Michael, and Carolyn to send your love and appreciation in the chat. Uh, give them a personal note. Tell them how much you've gotten out of and you've enjoyed uh, the work that you've done with them. Um, Ricardo Barris is the CEO and founder of a marketing agency and software development shop. Tatiana is the chief marketing officer of a fast-growing women's wellness product. Michael Pace is the chief um, marketing officer of Connected Jewelry uh, and an expert um, in the sustainable jewelry field. And Carolyn Quinton, our newest uh, addition to the team, uh, along with Michael, is the president of Quinton & Associates, a career coaching uh, and advisory uh, company. Thank you, guys for being a part of this amazing uh, experience. And I wanted to actually give Tatiana the floor uh, to say a few words about her experience this semester working with all of you. Thanks, Dan. Um, I just wanted to quickly say that I am so incredibly proud of this entire cohort, uh, cohort 19. We have accomplished so much. And I just think that, you know, especially on the legs of a year that was so tough, 2020. I mean, everybody sort of stepped up to the plate and gave it their all. And so I'm just so proud of the entire group for every everything that they've done and the hard work that they put into learning and to growing their business, because that's essentially what you do with the BizHack program is it's all about learning so that you can grow your business. Unmute. You're on mute, Dan. Thank you, Tati. It's so great to have you be a part of this. Um, Tati, you want to just remind folks that you were uh, part of the very first, uh, uh, went back, uh, your, your OG uh, biz hack, uh, we called it market hack back then. And I actually had you in my very first cohort uh, at the at, at Miami Day College. Yeah, it's so, it's crazy how for, full circle it went. Um, I was actually one of I was the, one of the, in the first group of students and now, um, oh my gosh, for six years, I think I've been coaching and, and even co-leading some of the courses. So it's, it, it's crazy also to see how much Facebook and the marketing tools have evolved since we first started, um, until now. Absolutely. And, um, thank you, Tati, for all that you do for everybody, uh, uh, please send your appreciation to those of you who worked with Tati directly or have worked with her in the past. So today's program is we're going to start with a series of really inspiring case studies, uh, nine 
case studies from amazing entrepreneurs. Um, five of them are going to be from the lead catchers. Uh, that's the digital marketers edge course. These are folks who are focused on lead generation using ads on Facebook and Instagram. The other group, the link fluencers, you're going to see four case studies of business owners that are looking to become thought leaders in their industry using LinkedIn. So we're going to have lead generation case studies, how to get new leads and sales using Facebook and Instagram ads. And you're going to see case studies in individuals who are looking to position themselves as thought leaders uh, using LinkedIn as a tool to do that. We're going to then have a graduation ceremony where we're going to give out certificates. We'll have a class photo. We'll have the Biz Hacker Awards. This is the highest honor that we give to anyone uh, going through our program. And throughout, we're going to have uh, a thank you gifts raffle. We're going to actually launch into a raffle here momentarily. And we have a little special musical surprise at the end. So stick around until uh, 2.30 Eastern. Uh, it's going to be worth it. You'll see. Let's start with the raffle. Uh, all right, Marianne, you ready for me? Oh, I'm sorry. I was mute. Yes. Totally right, ready. We so we have a, okay, let me explain the tradition first. The tradition is this. BizHack is all about creating community. We know a thing or two as instructors, but we recognize that what's even more valuable is the peer support and the community that you can form supporting one another through this process. Why? Because we're not gonna be there forever, but you guys can be. This community of biz hackers supporting and helping one another, doing business with one another, providing feedback to one another. Uh, we had a very active chat on WhatsApp and LinkedIn. Uh, we would have labs every week where we would workshop together your, um, your, 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 your campaigns. And what's really important about this is you don't need marketing experts to look at your campaign with the eyes of a consumer. In fact, sometimes it's worse if you're an expert. It's better if you just are coming cold at a piece of marketing and just giving your first impression because that's exactly how it's going to work with your customer. So in recognition and as thanks to the amazing help and support that each of you have provided to one another, a number of you have volunteered to give free gifts to your classmates. And that's what this thank you gift tradition is all about. And I got to say, I'm very proud of you guys. We have more than 15 thank you gifts between the two classes, the largest trove of thank you gifts we've ever had. And it's going to start with my good friend, Alex Sellis from Sellis Produce, a $50 e-gift card to the local juice bar. And the winner is? It's David Cadenas. David Cadenas. Free 30-minute brand consultation with Brand Delishy, a brand new brand that was invented and born during the LinkedIn Business Edge by Claudia Canfield, $100 value. And the winner is? Trisha Leftenant. Trisha. We have an inspirational phone stand from Allison Raymond of Ernie Jr., an amazing app that all of us with kids need to check out. And the winner is? Amy Williams. Yay, Amy. We have a free 60-minute life coaching session with uh, sometimes our coaches and instructors will actually give out thank you gifts as well uh, because they want to promote their, I mean, because they really want uh, you guys to know how much they appreciate you. Uh, and the uh, winner of Cheryl Cattell's one-hour life coaching session with All Maya is? Claudia Pamphill. Yay, Claudia. Lucky you. Uh, we have a small Koke Dama from Kazumi Gardens uh, uh, by David Kadenas. Uh, uh, Koke Dama is a Japanese plant, and the winner is? Alex Sellis. Ooh, Alex. And another produce guy. I love uh, a guy who really knows plants. I love it. Well chosen. Now, um, we're going to have a quick Zoom poll um, about continuing your learning journey and get, uh, getting in, uh, additional support from BizHack. Um, is uh, someone from my team able to launch that? I think you are able to do that uh, then. It's the first poll. That's something that I have to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It doesn't, it's not letting me, unfortunately. No, I... Uh I'm able to launch it. Okay. It's the one that it says getting additional support from this app. Okay. So just very quickly, um, we offer additional coaching to kind of keep the momentum going. We recommend you do it roughly once a month uh, to just kind of 
track what you have uh, going uh, and, and uh, have accountability for continuing with it. So um, that's the, the first question. Uh, the second is that we do offer deeper consulting. We do it with folks like Michelle Rupp and some other businesses. And uh, if you're interested in kind of a deeper engagement, something uh, we, we would be happy to talk to you about. So you can just let us know if there's a particular area that you'd like potentially BizHack's help working on. Those are the areas that we specialize in and where we have really trusted partners who can help you. Um, so uh, go ahead and leave the poll open for a little while while people answer it. Uh, let's try to get uh, most people to respond one way or another. Um, um, and uh, in the meantime, I wanted to share with you guys a few exciting numbers. So uh, last year, we trained 2,134 businesses. This is across all of the training that we did. And I'm happy to report that we are actually exceeding that number in 2021 as a result of the partnership that we've done with uh, the mayor's office uh, and the masterclass series that many of our instructors have been involved with. Um, we have given 819 certificates uh, uh, in digital marketing since 2015, including 15 uh, in the LinkedIn Business Edge and more than 800, we just broke 800 uh, in the Digital Marketer's Edge. And uh, I can't wait, we're, we're probably about a year away from breaking a thousand and that's gonna be a day when we're gonna really celebrate. Um, and and we've I'm sorry, had... I'm going to relaunch the poll because um, maybe somebody clicked on the end poll and we had only the results for four people. So I'm going to relaunch it right now. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, no worries. So guys, when we make you uh, co-hosts, um, it gives you the ability to end the poll. So if you could just kind of leave the poll alone while we present it. Uh, we, uh, and those of you who did answer, please answer again. So we've had more than 60 uh, BizHack Live sessions to date, including three more that we have coming up with Cheryl Cattell, uh, Ricardo, and Alex Sellis all presenting. Without further ado, I want to welcome the Digital Marketers Edge Cohort 19. These are the lead catchers. These are the businesses uh, that completed our seven-week program in lead generation. Uh, so happy. Uh, gosh, these are a beautiful set of logos. Look at that. Um, wow. Th these are some of the most attractive logos I've ever seen, I got to say. Good job, everybody. Um, you guys ran uh, 63 campaigns. Uh, that's two, more than two per participant. You spent $3,500 uh, in advertising. You captured 322 leads, generated $97,000 plus in sales. And that's a return on investment of $28 for every $1 in advertising. That is amazing results. And congratulations, guys, for those. Without further ado, we're going to now actually see concrete examples uh, of some of those results um, from our amazing folks uh, who've been a part of this program. Uh, and um, this is really, um, you know, uh, all about um, uh, helping you guys um, recognize that, yes, you can do this. This is not something so difficult, uh, so um, foreign. Uh, that this isn't something that you can't do. Um, and um, I wanted to start uh, with the amazing Rob Sir of MG Scientific. So um, for each of these case studies, I'm gonna do a brief intro. Uh, I'm gonna then stop sharing and then uh, each of you will then share your screen and do your presentation. Uh, and when you're wrapped up, I'll come back on and do an intro to the next person. So, Rob Sir of MG Scientific, first and foremost, was one of the most generous and helpful students during this semester. He was always there to help us if we needed uh, to figure out where, which slide something was on or where we had put something uh, in the learning management system to, to help us out and to make himself uh, incredibly helpful and useful. He has an incredible uh, recall uh, and he's incredibly organized. But more than that, he turned out to be a heck of a marketer as well. He produced an incredibly effective awareness ad that nearly 100%, 99% of the people who saw it actually went and watched the full video, which is really eye-popping results. Um, and he was able to create targeted persona pairs that were really uh, specific to his ideal customer. And so as you're gonna see 
uh, in this upcoming presentation, Rob has done a really beautiful job uh, of nailing Pillar uh, uh, 5, uh, Pillar 4, which is the thumb stopping video, and Pillar 2, which is your target audience. Rob, take it away. Thank you. All right, hello, my name is Rob Sir, and I'm from MG Scientific. Uh, I created and ran both the Awareness and Lead Generations ad. Hey, Rob, uh, uh, can you share your screen so we can see your uh, oh, okay. Does it work now? So at the bottom of Zoom, there's a green box that says share screen. Um, and if you're having some trouble, we can move on and then we can come back to you. He's frozen. Okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to resolve the issue. Thank you for alerting me to that. So uh, next up is gonna be Amy Williams. I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick intro of Amy and then we'll get started with her. Can you see my screen okay? Okay. Amy Williams of Williams and Connor Beef Jerky is one of my favorite biz hackers of all time for one very simple and gluttonous reason. I love my beef jerky. And I want to say that uh, I was a customer of Amy's before she was a customer of mine. And it has been uh, love at first sight, I'll tell you. She has also shown the most extraordinary resilience. Uh, this has been a really rough time to be in the beef jerky business. The, the cost of her inputs, the meat, uh, have skyrocketed week over week. Um, over the summer, she was working the lines of her beef jerky plant because she couldn't find workers due to the COVID great res resignation. But Amy Williams has persevered. And not only did she uh, dominate the class in terms of her excellence and her effort, but she has actually been voted by her peers as one of the graduation presenters. Uh, Amy, thank you so much for your effort, uh, for your passion, and most of all, for your beef jerky. Amy Williams. Thank you. Can you see my screen? Yep, looks great. I'm Amy Williams, the Chief Jerky Officer at Williams & Connor Beef Jerky, where we're gonna change your brand of jerky. And this is our journey to find you. When I was a college freshman, my dad lost his job as a corporate accountant with uh, Kmart. And I watched for two years as my dad was rejected again and again, as he applied for jobs all over the country. And it was difficult to see him struggle to put food on the table and eventually sell my childhood home. Um, when my husband decided that he wanted to start a beef jerky business, I should have asked why beef jerky, but I didn't. I was excited for the opportunity to control my financial future. And I learned that it was an opportunity also for us to provide um, job skills for my six children, from painting and palletizing to delivering product and doing online sales. Um, but also, it provided an opportunity for us to provide jobs in our rural community. Um, it also allowed us to provide um, service in our community. We've been able to use our delivery truck to do muckouts of the hurricanes that have plagued our uh, Gulf Coast here in Texas. And we've been able to also send pallets of jerky down to the volunteers that have been helping in that process. We've also shipped boxes of jerky to vaccine volunteers. And our favorite thing is to fill boxes to the, uh, that we send to the troops when uh, their family members wanna ship jerky to them, we fill it to the brim. I did a uh, video views awareness campaign and I tried to target the Peloton bikers tribe. They're already kind of an active um, healthy eater group. And so we looked into that. I haven't yet launched my, or I, I did this week, I did an irresistible offer campaign where we're offering 20% off our jerky sampler. And this is the video that I initially targeted those Peloton bikers with. Um, our compelling message that we're um, looking at or trying to message them with is that we have a snack that is only one carb and 45 calories. And it's a snack that checks all the boxes as it's a portable, protein, healthy thing that you can just carry around and, and don't have to worry about getting off your diet for. This is our landing page that will be able to snag their uh, email and be able to send them their discount code. When we did our video views campaign, we were able to get 1,600 impressions. We were able to do um, about 1,300 uh, video plays. Sorry, and my, my screen wasn't showing my through plays, but we had about 1,200 through plays at three cents per. 
And then uh, the things that I learned, uh, we when you use lookalike audiences or you do exclusions, it helps you to target in on the kind of people that are going to be more likely to engage with your brand. And then to look at crossover interests helps you to kind of view other customers that you may not have thought of. And then to nurture your leads all the way through the sales funnel and to kill them with kindness, but also with information so that you don't lose them along the way. My next steps, um, I'm going to use information that I've learned in the course to work with my current marketing team to target some more business to business transactions through the gift marketing industry and also some private label branding. We're starting a Chupacabra um, private label in the next couple of months. And then we've just launched our new packaging that we've been working on over the pandemic that um, highlights our healthy snacking um, um, aspects and our go and branding. We're Williams and Connor Beef Jerky, and we're going to change your brand of jerky. Thank you. Yummy. Exactly. Beautiful job. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, next up is David Cadenas. I'm going to do a quick intro, David, and then you'll share your screen. Beautiful job, by the way. Um, by the way, David, this is a very sexy shirt. Um, all right, here we go. Kazumi Garden uh, and David Cadenas have been a big part of the BizHack journey. Uh, and the reason why is one of our key team members lost a loved one very unexpectedly at the beginning of this semester. And it was devastating for her uh, and devastating for the team. Uh, and we all have experienced terrible loss and tragedy over the last couple of years with COVID. I'm very thankful that Kazumi Garden was there for us in that moment. We bought a beautiful Japanese plant that will live on for years uh, and will be a, a really permanent uh, reminder of how much we love our, our teammate uh, and how her loved one is going to be remembered. Um, we once had a biz hacker who did preserved roses because when she was sick with cancer, she hated the idea of her roses dying. And so she learned how to preserve them. Well, in many ways, David has an even more compelling product because what they sell are live plants that will live on into the future. David also happens to be a heck of a marketer, the number one vote getter from all of his classmates uh, for this presentation that you're about to see. No pressure. David Cadenas of Kazumi Garden. Welcome. Thank you for those words, Dan, and for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Let me present to you my screen. Can you listen to me and see my screen right now? I can hear you, and now we're seeing your presentation. Perfect. So as Dan was mentioning, my name is David Cadenas. I'm the head of marketing of Kasumi Garden, and I'm going to share with you our learning journey during this course. But let me tell you a little bit about our story first. Kasumi Garden makes art through nature, bringing a more natural and artistic way to display plants. Mercedes, which is here on the left, it's one of the founders of the company. She went to Japan to visit her daughter, and her passion for plants made her, made her fall in love with the ancient kokidama technique. So she started doing it here as a hobby in the United States. Her son, Agardo, which is um, the second founder of the company, saw the potential to bring wellness to the family through this art and gave her a little kick. Now, Kasumi Garden has become a family-owned business that has gained experience and recognition throughout the United States, making us the <clears throat> Kokedama Masters. I started working with Kasumi Garden um, right before COVID February, February 2020, which actually shifted um, my perception, my point of view of nature. Because if you actually think of nature as an energy, you'll be able to understand the language of the universe. As human beings, we're always seeking for our purpose. For me, personally is to be alive, be present and serve through my passion. Working in Kasumi Garden is a door, sorry, it's a door to get involved in something bigger than me. Our mission as a company is to connect you with nature through this living Japanese art. And my mission in this company is to make that happen. Because beyond money and social status, the energy of nature connects me to um, a superior me. And I feel everyone should experience it as well. That's why I believe our Kokedamas are one of the mediums to get there. During this course, we presented, we did two campaigns. I'm gonna show the results of our first one, which was the brand awareness. 
Our campaign objective was video views and we were targeting plan enthusiasts, uh, females from 24 to 60 years old, we, who were interested mainly in plants. For um, the second lead um, campaign, we did a 10% uh, off on our hero product, um, but that's something that it was in the second one. For this one, we did an eight second th thumbs up in video. Um, this was our compelling message, which, which is uh, easy maintenance and unique, fall in love with the Kokodama technique. The moss makes the water simpler and more, more fun. Our um, call to action was to learn more. We wanted to introduce people um, a little bit more of uh, what is Kokodamas. So we had a landing page with information and then a subscription um, form. For this ad, we spent $25. We had 7,424 impressions. We had three sec um, almost 4,000 three-second video plays and a little bit more than 2,000 through plays. We uh, had zero uh, sales revenue for this campaign, but we actually had four, four link clicks and the four of them were subscriber on our website. Um, my biggest ahas during this course were um, this phrase that Alex shared in the first class that was, learn the rules like a pro so you can break them as an artist by Pablo Picasso. Um, also the power that Facebook has, honestly, before doing this course, I didn't know the minimum of the power of Facebook, honestly, this was amazing for me. And then last but not least, my one-on-ones with Tatiana McDaniel were honestly very eye-opening and it made me understand a lot more what we were going through the course. For our company, what's next is to have at least four running ads per month, organize and structure more of the marketing strategies, double our online sales by 2022, create uh, customer journeys for user persona and segment our customers for product collection. I want to thank to all the BizHack team, honestly, to all of you, uh, Linkfluencers for being here as well, and to the lead catchers that were with me in the car in the class. I am a believer that uh, we learn and grow through um, in community. So I'm very thankful for this experience. Thank you so much. And uh... You also have apparently an amazing playlist to watch plants grow by. Uh, I wanted to share, uh, how do we find that playlist on Spotify? So you can, I can actually share with you guys. It's, it's called, you can search for Kasumi Garden also in Spotify. And we have two plays right now running. Love it. Thank you. Um, so uh, Antoinette, you're going to be up next. Rob Sir, you'll be after her. Um, and uh, I'm going to do a quick intro now of Antoinette, and then she'll go into her presentation. Antoinette Vanasek. What do I say about Antoinette uh, of Vanasek Insurance? Well, I'll tell you a story. After class one of the Digital Marketer's Edge, I got a call from Antoinette. And Antoinette said, Dan, I'm going to be the best student you've ever had. And uh, she was right. She has been an extraordinary participant, uh, helpful to her peers, and fierce in her efforts to learn digital marketing to grow her company. She is a talented business owner who's taking a sleepy space with insurance and turning it into a high-tech endeavor. Uh, she already had an incredibly powerful lead generator on her website, really all that was missing with some eyeballs. And that's what we hope uh, we've given you a path to getting more of. Antoinette Vanasek, it's been a pleasure working with you. You're a fierce entrepreneur. I admire you hugely. And I'm looking forward to hearing a little bit more about your real life campaign. Thank you, Dan, for your kind words. Um, I did not put another presentation together. What I did is when you said speech, I literally did that. So I'll make it quick. So it's a pleasure to be here today. Before I get started, I want to thank everyone for inviting me to speak and I'm excited and honored to be here. So congratulations to both classes. You worked hard for this moment and you deserve to enjoy it. I know how difficult this can be for some of you as we say goodbye to classmates and friends who we've gotten close to over the past several weeks. I want, to, I want you to enjoy this day, but also know it may be difficult for some of you to truly relax and celebrate. 
You may worry about the state of the economy and how that may be affecting your future. That's why I wanted to take a few minutes of your time before we start to discuss how we can use what we've learned here to achieve success in our future endeavors. I hope this will be helpful to all of you as you take the next steps from this course. Now, I'm sure many of you here today think digital marketing as something that is just done on the internet, but that's just part of what we have learned throughout your time here at BizHack Academy. Digital marketing isn't just about creating digital content, it is also about reaching your target audience. And whether you're marketing online or offline, you should always be focused on how you can reach your customer. If you really absorb the knowledge that you gain throughout your time here at BizHack Academy, then you should know how to use the internet to reach your audience in a meaningful way, which means you should know how to use digital marketing to reach the customers in a way that will lead them to do business with you, which is emphasizing the core concepts that Dan and the rest of the team has emphasized throughout this entire course. So don't ever make the mistake of thinking that customers are just sitting at their computers waiting to find your site and become your next big client. The best way to reach your customers is by understanding where they are in the buying process and how you can position yourself to meet their needs. You should cre create the content that shows how you can help them solve their problems and achieve a goal. And don't just think that online content should be your focus on how you can reach customers offline as well. This means you should have a good understanding of the overall marketing process and how everything works together to meet your overall business goals. The internet should be one part of the bigger, bigger picture that you need to really understand if you want to achieve success. But thanks to the internet, you don't need to rely entirely on one particular channel alone. You can also use digital marketing, PR, social media, television, radio, or word of mouth to reach your customers. It may take you a little while to figure out what works best for you and your business, but once you do, it will be well worth the time and effort that goes into it. Thank you. Beautiful, thank you. Do you remember that phone call at the beginning of the semester? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I probably misquoted you, but you've been a wonderful participant, and I'm, uh, we're all really honored uh, to have worked with you this semester. And thank you. That, that's actually uh, a beautiful speech that really aligns very much uh, with how we uh, approach digital marketing, which is it's really just an extension uh, of your human-to-human -human connections with your ideal customer. So thank you for that. All right, we're going to give Rob a try. Uh, Rob, you're up next. I'll do a quick intro again. Robert Sir of MG Scientific was a fantastic participant this semester. Always generous in helping us instructors whenever we needed uh, someone to point out uh, which slide something appeared on or where it appeared in the learning management system. He's incredibly organized, incredibly systematic. He is clearly a, a very scientific guy. And he also... I had pretty extraordinary results. He had a 99% through play on his video, which is one of the highest through plays we've ever seen in the history of BizHack. Uh, a through play means someone watching a video until the end. Um, and he has proven himself to be not only uh, a great and supportive participant in the course, but a heck of a marketer too. Uh, Robert Sir of MG Scientific, welcome and congratulations. Uh, we're excited to hear about your real life campaign. Thank you. Um, hopefully it works better this time. So, um, and thank you for the kind words. It's very nice. I, I appreciate the honor to, to present this as well. Is it working this time? Okay, all right. So, hello, uh, my name is Rob Sir uh, from MG Scientific. Uh, I created and ran both the awareness and the lead generations ads. Uh, the lead generation had no data, so today's presentation is on the awareness ad for a free service that we offer called InventTrack. Yeah, okay. MG Scientific is a distributor of scientific supplies with customers ranging from small labs, medium labs, and government labs. 
Our focus has always been customer service and helping customers gain control of their lab productivity. The campaign objective was an awareness of the Inventrack service through video views. The target audience was lab managers, purchase managers. The thought was to connect to the people whose job is affected by managing inventory, offering a free objective assessment of the current lab inventory usage and storage. The campaign objective was video awareness to connect with an overworked, overextended, and overwhelmed inventory and purchasing manager. We understand your pain. Let us give you a viable solution to help organize your lab's inventory. From our warehouse, we can store your excess inventory and ship it to you when you need it, making your lab more effective and productive. There are some very encouraging results, as Dan mentioned, from the data processed and analyzed. There was virtually no drop off from the three second views to the through plays of the 16 second video. So the video must have been interesting enough to watch all the way through. Uh, and we also received several clicks from the website uh, and the ad and the post that we put onto the Facebook page. Overall, we need to get the viewers a reason to move forward with our services, again, the next step would be the lead generation ad. So a few aha moments during the class. Uh, I never thought of Facebook more than looking at videos and cat memes. Um, as far as marketing goes, Facebook has a large audience and potential to reach your specific audience and similar lookalike audiences. The importance of mapping the full customer experience and I'm used to doing this much on my own. So having a necessary support system full of resources and extremely helpful. Uh, thanks to the group and to my coach, Mike. Uh, based on the information, uh, obviously uh, breakout sessions, one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, uh, there's more work to be done. I uh, like creating more targeted lead generation campaign with downloadable material such as thought leadership with white papers the need to update and create landing pages that are more impactful and directional for the visitors, also to create and use an infographic of the InventTrack process. So that's my presentation. So thank you very much for your time and um, there you go. Screen is back yours. Good job, really nice work. Um, and thank you, Ray uh, Harris. That was a very enthusiastic set of uh, clapping for your class, uh, for your across the aisle classmate. I love that kind of support. All right, uh, so we have our fifth and final presenter now, Sandy uh, Luth of Rustic County uh, Soaps. Uh, we're gonna uh, get started with you now. Uh, let me just do my quick intro and, and then you'll be going, stand by. Sandy Luth of Rustic County Soaps is one of those biz hackers uh, who couldn't get enough the first go round, so she came back for more. Uh, Sandy actually first participated in our program about half a year ago, and like so many of you, her, her bucket got a little over full. It's an intense class, and there's a lot there. And so she came back, and boy, did she come back with, uh, on fire. She runs a startup country soap company for people who have skin issues like enzyma and who need something to take care of their skin in a natural and non-irritating way. This is a really tough business to be in. Uh, it's an e-commerce business with a low cost product. And uh, Sandy wanted to move beyond the farmer's markets in her neighborhood uh, to actually begin to sell online. And uh, she has been one of the uh, most dedicated, uh, the most committed, and one of the best performing uh, of all of the participants in our program. Sandy, it's our distinct pleasure to help introduce the world uh, to rustic country soaps. Uh, and we look forward to having uh, a more natural bath uh, with them. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dan, and thank you all for all of your support. I couldn't have done this without you. Marianne's gonna play my slideshow. Yes. Um, ready now. Marianne. Okay. Here it is. 
Are you seeing the correct one? No. Yes. Could you just hit uh, slideshow in the upper corner, please? I'm sorry? If you could hit slideshow in the upper corner so we can see it as a full screen. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Sandy Louth, and I am the proud owner of Rustic Country Soaps. Each and every product that we create is completely handcrafted, one batch at a time, using our own unique formulations. My business story, my story of the RCS journey, first it starts with a couple that loves each other, loves to be creative and resolve issues, starting with my continuous battle with psoriasis, our daughter's battle with eczema, and our oldest son's skin issues from being in a wheelchair. We grew tired of doctor visits, prescriptions, putting products on our, on our skin with ingredients we weren't familiar with or couldn't even pronounce, harsh chemicals. Have you ever read what is in some of the everyday soaps, lotions, and creams? I knew there had to be a better way, a safer way for us and others. From there, it's history. This is my family and my grandkids, and my kids and my grandkids. Pillars of one through three of my real life campaign. I actually did the video views and a lead generation. Um, my campaign is that I'm showing you here is the video views. My target audience was ages 25 to 64. People interested in organic handmade soap, health and beauty care, uh, National Eczema Association, uh, different stuff like that, natural soap. There's a lot of people interested in that. We we offered an irresistible offer in this ad, and basically we're using our ball bar bar bolt. Bar bought, bar given. For every retail bar of soap sold, we donate a bar of soap to a homeless shelter or, or an organization. During our campaign, we also offered a free sample. Here's a sample of my video. We did the completely naked soap, which has no added scents or colors, and it's made from all natural butters and amazing oils. And here is our compelling message about every bar bought, bar given. And be clean, lather up, take care of your skin because it's the only one you have. Here is my customer journey. This was quite interesting for me to actually put into perspective. And that really helped me a lot in understanding all the processes of this. But basically, this is our journey. And then it's rinse and repeat and keep doing it. Our ad budget was $50. We had 2,728 impressions, 651 through plays. We got 14 link clicks, three leads, and three sales. From the sales, not including tax or shipping, we made $134. So that main, means our return on ad spend was $84. My biggest ahas, wow, what a journey it has been in this course. Discovering what my true story of me is and actually putting it into words. The power of Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and others. I had no idea how much was collected by them all to help us to target audiences, demographics, interests. That alone blows my mind. How important it is to map the customer journey and how it opened my eyes to how this can set us apart from our competitors and the amazing power of being able to retarget previous audiences, making lookalike audiences, and how these can be used and tweaked to target new audiences or new customers. Rinse and repeat. What's next for us and our company? Growing our brand and expanding our reach, growing our sales, mastering digital marketing, keep our product offerings fresh, try new things, broaden our horizons, maximize profits, and to be so successful, thus allowing us to do this full time. And I had an interesting fact I wanted to share from research. The handmade soap industry, bar soap and liquid soap, is expected to explode to a $24 billion industry by 2022. And this is a pre-COVID estimate. COVID will likely boost that amount. I just want a piece of this pie. Thank you all so much. This has been a wonderful class. I, uh, I got to ask, uh, where are you located? Because uh, I want a piece of that pie too. <laughs> 
I am in Texas, Magnolia, Texas. <laughs> I love it. Well, congratulations. You are a uh, phenomenal uh, entrepreneur, marketer, and uh, I imagine you're probably not a bad pie maker either. <laughs> No, but I make soap pretty good, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. Well, that is the Digital Mark uh, Marketers Edge Lead Catchers presenters. I'm going to uh, quickly share uh, a couple really exciting stats about you guys and your performance this semester. So over the start of the semester, uh, you guys were at, on the 20 learning objectives of the course. You were that blue line. And uh, at the end, you reported reaching that red line. It is an extraordinary jump in knowledge and confidence. We basically consider mastery seven. And so all of these skills, uh, you guys have basic mastery of now, uh, and you're going to be able to move forward without random acts of marketing, but with a lot of confidence uh, that you're doing the right things. You've also had concrete jumps in your knowledge around digital marketing. You increased on average by more than 34, uh, uh, by 34 points on the digital marketing test, an increase in less than two months of 14%. I wanted to give my uh, marketing coach, Michael Pace, a chance to reflect on what it's been like to work with you guys this semester. Thanks, Dan. Um, so looking back at it, um, there's, here's a few ahas which I had. Um, I think as a coach, and this is the first time I'd coached on this course, I discovered how, and perhaps more importantly, why coaching this course makes it a very different sort of course. Um, when I participated originally as a, um, as a student, it was in 2018. And even then, it was quite a challenging course. There's lots of information. Um, but this time, actually running it as a, or, or participating as a coach, I could appreciate how much it was sort of condensed now into a shorter period, but with even more information. Um, so it's tough. It's tough if you're a participant. But it does have one thing which I think most other courses don't have, and that's this coaching resource. Um, and being a coach, you really appreciate it. So um, I think the coaches have a major role in helping um, the students uh, navigate their own path, creating you know, a real-world campaign and, and getting the most out of the course. Um, and I think that we as coaches... Um, we sort of understand this and we, and if you get the sense that, you know, all the coaches are rooting for you throughout the course, it's because I think we all share the sort of sense of responsibility um, and feeling that we want to make your campaigns work. We're actually behind you every step of the way. Um, the second aha is uh, sort of admiration, which I have for anyone taking on the course. Um, I created a WhatsApp group for the people I was coaching, which is called Piñateros. And as you probably know, the piñata is a donkey-shaped container. Well, it can be different shapes. Um, kids tend to smash them up for their birthdays and get out the toys which are inside. So um, uh, I, I sort of felt that was appropriate because, you know, people on this course, they, they create campaigns in Facebook, and then those campaigns have to be remade. Um, quite often, sort of Facebook doesn't allow those campaigns to go through. They have to be redone. And um, again and again, I've seen um, the people I was coaching uh, refuse to give up under difficult circumstances um, and really um, prove a sort of sense of character. Um, and the answer to, to the, all these trials is always to be creative and be flexible, but never give up. And that attitude really came through, I thought. Um, and then lastly, I think that uh, it's given me an appreciation for, um, for everyone as sort of leaders in, in small to medium-sized companies and what you do for society in general um, I had a variety of businesses I was coaching for. So we had uh, a Spanish language school, um, a company that was doing hot stamping of promotional items, a company doing pool cleaning, selling scientific equipment, helping businesses take out loans, negotiating legal contracts, selling solar panels, um, all of these different things. And um, one of the things that, that, that I think really helps in this course was establishing your values. Um, and just to give one example, for example, uh, Molly, um, who's doing Enterprise Spanish, um, she started off by really teaching Spanish to doctors and nurses, which is great. But when we looked at the, the values behind it, um, we went one stage deeper. And I think this course in encourages you to do that. Um, we looked at the way that Spanish and communication helps patients um, 
because it because the doctors and nurses can convey what they want to the patient and it actually gives the patients a sense of dignity uh, so there's a sort of multiplier effect so every doctor molly trains to speak spanish helps hundreds of their patients feel more valued and i think that when you revisit your values through this course you discover the true worth of your company um, and that is what you can then leverage with facebook so my advice would be um Go back and look at all the materials which you've got, because there's a lot more than, than you see on the surface. Um, look at all the tips and all the tools. And um, I would say congratulations for, um, for coming this far. And it's been a privilege to be a coach for the group. Thanks for listening and being prepared to try out new ideas. And good luck. Thank you for those words. I uh, really appreciate it, Michael. Um, can you hear me okay? Okay, let me go ahead and um, So um, we have our next round actually of thank you gifts. Um, and uh, the first one is one set of logo cookies from Build It Digital Marketing, Fernando de los Santos. And the winner is? Alison Raymond. Congratulations, Allison. And MBTI assessment and debrief uh, on the Myers-Briggs type indicator with Carolyn Quinton, a $300 value. And the winner is? Michelle Rook. All right, Michelle. We have free one-hour marketing strategy session with Michael Pace, a uh, $250 value. And the winner is? Omar Sanchez. All right, Omar. We have a $50 Starbucks gift card for N from NRG Insurance and Michelle Rupp. And the winner is? Dominique Guevara. Congratulations, Dominique. A free strategic planning consultation, 90 minutes with Millie Herrera of the Miami Group and Associates. And the winner is Don Wood. $450 value, the big winner of today. We have a free 30-minute digital presence audit with Ricardo Barris of Me Group USA, one of our great instructors. The winner is Fernando de los Santos. Wonderful. Thank you, guys. Uh, we now have uh, the very distinct pleasure of welcoming the LinkedIn Business Edge Cohort 1 uh, for their incredible campaign presentations. These are the Linkfluencers. And uh, a couple of these... Uh, JLW Consulting, Brandalishi, uh, really kind of launched their brands in a big way as part of this course. We're so proud to be a part of the uh, uh, Reinventing Her as a newer brand, uh, to be a part of that story. And then, of course, Juan Concierge and VTI, uh, two uh, well-established, uh, large uh, B2B companies uh, who also uh, were trying to upgrade their influence uh, and sales uh, on LinkedIn. So we have a video from Carolyn Quinton. Uh, I'm gonna uh, share again, uh, but make sure that the, the video is optimized. And here we go. Hi everybody, this is Carolyn Quinton and I'm excited about the graduation today at BizHack because we have the DME and the LBE, both classes coming together to graduate and congratulate each other and have a little fun. So I have on my graduation cap and I was a coach and also a learner in the LinkedIn Business Edge. And what I learned from Cheryl and every one of the people that I worked with was just amazing. I have always loved LinkedIn, but we were able to create some different approaches and ways of being thought leaders in the LinkedIn class. So I especially want to thank the people that I work closely with, and I have a long list here, but I worked with Claudia, Vera, Sandy, Teresa, Janine, and Michelle. And from each one of them, I know they went from not being very comfortable about people seeing what they had done so far on their LinkedIn to being way over on the other side of, hey, 
I can do this now. I know how to connect with people. I know how to be able to use activities in a variety of ways and not just like somebody's post, but share it, comment it, write my own article, even do a little ebook. And there was a lot of learning here. So I know from me, I thank all of you and I thank the BizHack family for my participation and my working with you. I just loved it. I hope you did too. And I can't wait to see what you create. Good luck, everybody. Keep in touch. I'm so happy we were able to connect on LinkedIn and let's keep moving forward. Perfect. I, uh, I hope you guys were able to see that. It was pretty awesome uh, 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 what she was sh sharing. Um, and uh, Lilia, can you confirm that I'm coming in a little clearer now in terms of my audio? Yes, you're coming out clearer. All right. I apologize about that. Thanks. Yeah. For yeah if you can just move the chat uh, box somewhere else, because now we're seeing in front of Jenny's face. Excellent. All right. Thank you. So... Janine, you're going to come up next. I'll do a quick intro and then you're up. Janine Williamson of JLW Consulting is, uh, I'll be very honest, someone who BizHack uh, really wants to get uh, partnered with. She is a diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion consultant. Uh, like uh, me and some of the other people in the company, used to work at NPR uh, and in the media industry. And she is just the most extraordinary professional uh, who has uh, decided to take the leap into entrepreneurship and start her own consulting business. She's actually going to be hosting a session that we do later this month for Black Professionals Month, uh, celebrating the more than 40 Black-owned businesses that have gone through the program. And I got to tell you, Janine, you came through big time in this program. Uh, we're so proud uh, of the progress that you made. And clearly, your peers felt similarly because they voted you to be one of the graduation presenters. I hope this is the beginning of a long and uh, fruitful partnership and relationship. Janine Williamson of JLW Consulting. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Dan. That was such a, such a, a thoughtful and kind introduction. I'm going to share my screen here. You guys can all see my presentation. All right, um, so I am Janine Williamson from uh, JLW Consulting. Um, I've had the pleasure of learning so much um, from this course. And just to share a little bit about me and my story, um, I uh, grew up really not seeing myself represented um, on TV and radio, um, you know, flipping through magazines. And it really um, inspired me to want to understand how people got to tell their stories um, and uh, what it took for someone like me's story to be told. Um, as I started to grow and learn and, and experience my own career in media and in uh, the nonprofit space, uh, I felt myself that um, unfortunately I experienced a lot of institutional uh, racism in the workplace. And uh, I decided as I started to uh, think about my own children, I have two sons, um, they inspired me to want to change and make things better for the future. So when they get into the workforce, they don't have to experience um, some of the things that I experienced when it came to feeling like their voice was heard um, in, in a conference room or uh, feeling like they were, uh, you know, passed over for a promotion, or they were told that uh, their ideas didn't matter. And so I really dedicated myself to working with organizations to help them be intentional about um, their diversity, equity, and inclusion strategies so that it wouldn't be something where they were just checking a box or, or um, trying to kind of keep up with what was happening um, in the media or, or the most recent fad. Um, when it came to values and culture, but really trying to align uh, their storytelling and messaging, um, their processes and policies, and their actual, the culture and actions that they are taking within their organization with best practices around inclusion 
and um, belonging um, and creating that environment inside and outside their organization. Um, and I love to do it from a background. My background is in digital strategy and product. Um, and so I really bring that lens to my work. So thinking about um, what my ideal customer and keywords and, and hashtags was, was really an important exercise for me. Um, I think realizing that um, there was a, a really strong uh, persona and type of organization I wanted to work with, um, starting at uh, thinking about the leadership team or the HR professionals in an organization as people that um, would be the ones that I would want to connect with and want to work with organizations that really value um, equitable practices. And it's not just something that they say and uh, really aligning with people that maybe uh, have that passion and those values and goals, but aren't really sure how to do it. And earlier I mentioned, I really like to bring um, my background into this work and uh, thinking about a thought leadership focus that will really uh, set apart my work from others in the field is really applying best practices from design thinking, um, product development and agile methodologies um, to the work around uh, diversity, equity, inclusion. It's, it's really, to me, it feels like such a um, a great connection to show how to bring empathy and evolution um, and uh, iterating to the work because this is a journey. It is not a one-stop, one-stop shop. You can do this in, in two steps type of process. It really is a journey just like product development. I learned a lot um, in this course and some of the things that I really um, took away from it uh, include um, thinking about um, how important it is to really engage with content, um, not just thumbs up or uh, like something, but to really create that engagement and being strategic about who I connect with and knowing that um, being strategic about it also fuels the quality of the connections that I make um, down the line. Um, and what's next for me is really um, being consistent in creating that foundation for myself. Um, so holding myself accountable to posting regularly, connecting with groups on LinkedIn, um, finding other influencers to follow so that I can create that narrative of um, what it is that I want to put out into the world. That's me. Well, I look forward to. Um co-hosting with you next week, uh, having you help host the amazing panel of Black business owners to celebrate Black Professionals Month. And uh, how's it going so far, the, the new business, the new uh, entrepreneurial journey? It's, it's been great. I think one of the things that um, I love, I'm a lifelong learner, I love to learn. And um, when you're kind of in uh, the world of the corporate world and you're doing it, um, there's often times where you feel like you're not doing it right or there's like some shame around like, I, I don't think I'm getting this. What I love about entrepreneurship is that it, everything is um, a learning experience and it's all part of the process and it's joyous. It's not shameful. And so I love that. You know, as a, as a fellow media guy, um, I've had actually now two great loves of my life. One was being a journalist and editor and reporter, uh, and now being an entrepreneur and business owner. It is a fabulous journey, and I uh, welcome you uh, on it. Thank you. Thank All you. right, so uh, next up is going to be uh, Michelle Rupp. Uh, let me just make sure I'm sharing the right screen here. Um, are you guys able to see Michelle Rupp right now? No, we're seeing yeah. his hack website. Yeah, exactly. I think I got that wrong. Let me just do that again. Even a guy who does this every day sometimes gets it wrong. Here we go. Okay. This is going to be a delicious intro uh, because I've gotten to know Michelle really well over the last uh, year. Michelle Rupp of NRG Insurance is the very first biz hacker in our history to be a graduation presenter, not just once, but twice, as part of her participation in the first ever LinkedIn Business Edge. And Michelle Rupp is a fierce competitor, an incredible entrepreneur, a bodybuilder, uh, at least former bodybuilder, and brings that kind of dedication and intense strength 
uh, of will to everything that she does. I'm so excited to welcome our newest thought leader uh, on the area of remote workforces. As part of her discovery process, she realized that her passion was to help businesses have remote workplaces that are inclusive uh, of women and mothers so that they can run business, so they, can, they can stay business in business and keep their career going. And it's with great excitement that we offer this amazing case study and thought leadership from Michelle Rupp of NRG Insurance. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, first of all, thank you, Dan, but not a bodybuilder, a power lifter. Quite a distinction, just saying. Um, there it is, <laughs> exactly. So I'm Michelle Ruff from Energy Insurance. And what's been interesting about the story of me from the first cohort to this is how much my story of me has evolved and continues to evolve. And it's been such a pleasure to be able to be able to be able to step back and work on the business instead of in it. So I can really flesh out the story of me and the story of us and what why we have come to where we are in this kind of journey of business. So I looked back and I, I was a designer and then my dad died suddenly and I came back to Seattle to run this business. And so I brought this kind of de design sensibility to this. And looking back over the trajectory, it's definitely one of innovation. And a lot of it was driven because I wanted our employees to be happy because insurance is not that sexy. It's not that fun. Clients are not thrilled when they walk away. And I wanted to make sure that our that my staff was happy and could be empathetic listeners and could really bring their full selves so that they could be there with our clients. So this represents um, Safeco CEO came into our offices at one point because I complained about something. And she's like, you're onto something. Let's do an agency of the future. So this is a panoramic of this retail experience we created that was a victim of, oh, the merger of Safeco with Liberty Mutual. But it was great. We did some interactive video games to make insurance more interesting. And then from there too, we've also won some awards around workplace flexibility and mostly because I have a lot of women in the workforce. So that's how this has kind of evolved for us. So our ideal customer is a pair of a CEO who appreciates the fact we're, we're a B Corp. We, have a, we bring our values strongly to our workforce. And so they're usually someone who wants to continue their brand by voting with their dollars and pairing with um, other vendors that that share values. And then the, their COO or CFO or in a smaller business admin assistant wants things to go smoothly, wants their needs to be met, wants it to be cost effective. Keywords are easy in insurance because we sell a whole bunch of different kinds, but also because I want to be a thought leader in remote work since we've done it over a decade when it was not very, when it was really painful. I do think I have a lot to add to the conversation, not just leading long distance teams and the stuff that's been going on, but truly a small business in a remote environment. So my thought leadership focus is the triple bottom line around because we're a triple bottom line company, that's really the uh, natural evolution for us around workplace flexibility. So I've had a lot of experience, good, bad, and ugly. Um, my thumb stopping visual was about Google announcing that they're going to be paying, they're, they're, they're going to kind of index and pay people less if they are staying at home, which to me is ex just not very thoughtful. You wanna pay employees for what they contribute, not where they live. I think it's tantamount to paying them for gender or paying them for all the stuff that doesn't really count. So my biggest ahas were a little engagement goes a really long way. So I'm in the top 1% of our, of our industry, which kind of is, um, Dan alluded to, we do have kind of a sleepy industry, which is weird because you need to market. But so it didn't take much. And now I'm really confident about LinkedIn that I'm on the right track. And next for me um, and my company is to continue to invite people on LinkedIn. Those people that don't know me, I reached out uh, in the in the cohort to that are co-presenting with us and, and invited them into LinkedIn. I want to give reviews and ask for recommendations. I need to get all my team members to continue to upgrade their profiles and we'll see where it leads us. 
So it was a wonderful experience for me. So thank you. Congratulations, Michelle. Uh, you've been a fabulous uh, client and student, and I've loved working with you and working with your team. And uh, I'm so sorry I got the bodybuilder power lifter thing wrong. Uh, so, <laughs> so what is the, um, could you tell us a little bit? Uh, I'm sure a lot of us are now curious about what is your uh, background in powerlifting? How, uh, uh, how did you compete and, and what was your, uh, gotta ask, what was the, high, the heaviest weight you ever lifted over your head? Well, it's a, it's three, it's a deadlift, it's a bench, and then it is a, a squat. So it's a combination of those three. And believe it or not, I competed in what is called drug free. <laughs> it's so weird. So they fully acknowledge some people that they drug. So my combined weights were over 900 pounds when I competed. But, oh my uh, yeah, it's not, I don't recommend it. It doesn't do well for your, for your joints, but it was a lot of fun when I did it because I am competitive. So there it is. So now you're just lifting the 900 pound weight of growing a business. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. Very analogous. I love it. All right, here we go. Uh, Vera, you're up next. Gosh, what can I say about Vera Kolesnik of One Concierge? Uh, Vera is not only an extraordinary professional marketer uh, who's worked for years with great passion and excellence uh, in the hospitality and linen industry, uh, but she also is just such a, a breath of fresh air, someone who holds herself to the highest standard uh, and really uh, is looking to uh, make a, an impact and mark on the world and to help her company take it to the next level. Uh, Vera also is a double graduate of ours. She took the Digital Marketer's Edge uh, a number of years ago. She was a memorable uh, participant with us then, and she was a fantastic participant uh, with us this semester. I also want to say personally thank you, Vera, for holding us to account this first time taking the course uh, and making sure that it met your needs and reached your highest standards. And so with that, I want to say thank you uh, to Vera Kolesnik. It's because of her and her encouragement that we got uh, represented from LinkedIn themselves uh, to come and present at the course, uh, Vera Kolesnik of One Concierge. Thank you, Dan, so much for your kind words. And it's hard to follow such an amazing dynamic group of Linkfluencers and BizHack graduates. I'm very proud to be a second time graduate of BizHack this time around. So my name is Vera Kolesnik. Can everybody see my screen? Yeah. Uh, my name is Vera Kolesnik. I am uh, originally from Kazakhstan. I'm sorry, to, I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, yeah, if you could take it out of that mode and put it, um, yeah. Like this? Yeah, that one. Okay. Um, so I'm originally from I'm Kazakhstan. Sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, could you click slideshow again? Let's see if it works this time. Uh, that's the presenter mode. Uh, see where it says use slideshow on the upper part, uh, on the upper row. There you go. Yeah. There you go. All right. If you don't mind starting over. Yeah, no problem. So I'm originally from uh, Kazakhstan and Russia by way of Russia. Uh, so for those of you wondering, yes, that's where the, the movie Borat was filmed. And yes, it is pretty accurate. Uh, and then I made my way to the United States, uh, where I've had a, a pretty interesting career and a fun life. And I also happen to be a breast cancer survivor. So I'm just saying this to raise awareness and uh, ladies, uh, don't ignore your mammogram. It's never too early. Um, so my business story, let's see if I can uh, the story of me. Uh, so I'm a lifelong product developer. In fact, I developed my first product when I was seven years old and I made a dress for my doll. And that was the very first product. The second product, it was about 12. My sister and I, we made uh, baby clothes from scraps of fabric from my mom's store and then we sold them. And then I paid for English classes and I'm making that money. So investment in your education works uh, at any stage. Uh, and then this picture here is my sister and I actually, we made these suits to go to school. We were in high school at the time. 
so that was the origin of kind of my life. And then I ended up coming to New York to FIT, uh, full of uh, dreams and big ideas and wanting to uh, develop products that will come to life. And I did that at several companies, uh, uh, some big companies here in Walmart and Macy's, and most recently one concierge. So we are business to business distributor in the hospitality and healthcare industries. And we sell primarily sheets, towels, bedding, robes, table linen, uh, directly to hotels, cruise lines, uh, casinos, um, nursing homes, and facilities of that nature. And here I do product development and marketing. And so that really has allowed me to not only work on development of new products, but also use marketing techniques to bring them to life. So I've really enjoyed uh, going through the class uh, and I've enjoyed exercise of developing the customer profile. So here we were able to identify two for the business. And now we had idea of this before and we had it on paper, but it was really refreshing to see customer profiles real time. Uh, this person here actually is our real customer and we were able to monitor his profile, though the public information, of course, that's available to see what he's responding to, he's connect, what he's connected to, what groups he belongs to. So this is a real time information about customer behavior and their interests and uh, what they take into consideration when making decisions. So we were able to identify two, one, uh, a purchaser for a larger business. So that would be uh, potentially multiple uh, hotels or hotel management company for multiple properties or uh, a housekeeping director for an individual property. And again, we were able to see the differences in behavior for both personas and then see how we need to craft our message differently depending on how they participate on LinkedIn and what actions they take. We've also identified a set of keywords that we've used that we've noticed our uh, target audience is using. And then we started integrating them into our posts and have seen uh, engagement really go up from there. Uh, in terms of thought leadership, uh, we have a strategy for the company and we definitely used a lot of insights from this class to shape it and make it even more laser targeted. We, as an organization, we really pride ourselves on providing consultative service to our customers. We teach our customers how to buy smart. It's not a one-time purchase, it's a business decision and it's a, a long-term relationship that we have with our customers. And so we want to make sure they know that we're experts in the industry. And so part of our thought leadership content is really talking about uh, very important topics in the industry, such as design trends for hotels, so that may influence uh, betting decisions or, or product decisions that they make, any technology that's happening in textiles or touching our FID chips or anything else, supply chain issues, everybody's aware of what's happening in the global marketplace now, and obviously our industry is affected as well and how they can mitigate that. Um, and many other and many other topics, but uh, really focusing around just what's happening in the industry. How can we educate our customers um, on on what's happening in the industry, and then how can we guide them towards making the right decision for them, potentially with the help of our product? So here's one of the examples of the posts uh, I've made on behalf of the company. Uh, the biggest ahas uh, was probably number one is this difference between personal profile versus a company profile. I joined with an intention to build up company profile uh, to very first to very soon learn that uh, personal profile play it carries a lot more weight. People buy from people, not from businesses. And so really seeing that difference and then uh, carrying it down to the people representing the organization, make sure that they understand it and how much power their profile really holds in terms of uh, generating leads, having influence in the industry, uh, and just doing business as a professional. Uh, obviously, there's per complexity to profile settings that it takes a bit uh, some time to to go through. However, huge benefits um, can be realized once you do that. Um, love seeing the carryover from other social media platforms of some techniques such as keywords and hashtag strategy. Um, and overall, I would say just the ability to tell a story and uh, a different story, right? Your own story, story of me if, uh, as you, you as a personal brand, a story for a business that you represent, but just having a, a point of view, having a passion and purpose and really bringing it all together so that uh, everything that we carry inside, we're allowed to express so that our customers and the world can really see it. And I think uh, this team is really gives us all the tools we need to bring that to life. 
so what's next would be working uh, with the team, sales team in my organization to make sure that they optimize their profiles and they're engaged and they're doing using all the tools available to them. Uh, continue working on the company profile, explore paid ad LinkedIn advertising, enjoyed the introductory session that uh, Dan has offered us. So looking to potentially learn more and bring that to the company to uh, uh, drive not only awareness, but maybe some business. And then also uh, sharing the passion of my passion for product development with the rest of the world and maybe getting some content going on that topic. So that's it. Then thank you so much for the warm introduction for a great class. I'm happy to take the second class. And if the new product is available, I will be right there um, for the third one as well. You know, we are, we're working hard to give you more to take. Uh, we, we recognize, uh, as they say in marketing speak, that uh, the best way to get a higher customer lifetime value is to add more product. Uh, so that you can keep your learning journey going with us. Uh, all right. Thank you, Vera. And I look forward to catching up with you. Uh, next up is going to be Bryant. Uh, so Bryant, get, get ready. I'm going to do a quick intro uh, and then you'll be up. I'm going to go share my screen. The first time I heard Brian Brackett, a BTI group, I had to do a double take because the man with the exact voice that he has is named Eric, and he's bald. But Bryant, Eric's son, uh, is carrying on the amazing legacy uh, of his uh, formidable father, uh, who has built BTI Group into one of the largest and most successful IT value-added resellers nationwide. And it's been such an honor uh, to meet the son of the incredible entrepreneurial father. Bryant leads a dynamic sales team who went through our program together. And, and together they worked with the taskmaster, Cheryl Cattell, to get them to get their LinkedIn profiles in shape. And Bryant led by example, not only showing what's possible with LinkedIn as a selling tool, but really showing the passion that is required uh, to take a company to $50 million. And it's with great uh, honor and pleasure that I welcome Bryant Brackett of the BTI Group, uh, who's here to represent not only himself, but the nine other salespeople whom he went through this program with. Bryant Brackett of BTI Group. Wow, thank you, Dan. Um, I. I don't, how do, how do you follow up an intro like that? Um, <laughs> we are, I'm Brian Brackett. And my first question to you guys is if you has your business been hacked? Cause BTI has your back, but at the end of the day, kind of where we got here, my dad and I had a shared experience as we'd have many shared experiences, as you can, I guess you can imagine. And we, we, ex we experienced tremendous loss at the very kind of root stage of BTI our house burned down in 1996 and we lost absolutely everything. Um, couple that on top of, I, I've come home half a dozen times from school, mid burglary with somebody in my house, ransacking the place and stealing jewelry. And I remember in those moments feeling hopeless and, and really scared. And it's those moments of lack of security and instability that is the reason why we do what we do. Now, I watched my dad build BTI from a one-room office that he shared with a pretty wild and crazy insur insurance salesman. Sorry, Michelle. And they, it, was, it was an experience that I, everybody should have. He stayed up late every night. I it was working 22-hour days, sleeping in the office, just grinding. And... It's people like that, that I do what I do. And it's the people that stand beside them as well that I, that I do this for. And my purpose is to allow the CEO and allow the entrepreneur to sleep well at night, not having to worry about payroll, not having to worry about whether or not their assets are secure. Or they're going to wake up to a dumpster fire the next day. 
That is what we are all about. And for that, I do the heavy lifting. Now, BTI does many things, all network related, um, and we can act as a virtual CTO um, or also as an extension of your team. We do active cybersecurity monitoring. We we monitor uh, customer networks 24-7, 365, and securing physical assets along with the alarm system, access control, and cameras. It's just a full kind of soup to nuts, work from home in a box type of environments, and we deliver that from start to finish. My particular areas of focus is the local government, hospitals, and K-12 through educational institutions, providing cybersecurity, unified communications, and physical security systems. My thumb-stopping visual is the results of what BizHack was. I was very hard on Dan when we first started. I was very hard on Cheryl as well. And the results kind of speak for themselves. Before the class, my average view count was about 100 views with no comments, no engagements, very little likes. As you can see here, my, my last post after implementing the the entire process, I got 1,960 views and eight comments. This process works. That's all I'm going to say about that. Our target per persona is frustrated Fred. It's the guy that's sitting in, in operations, the guy that's sitting in IT, who knows that there's things that need to be done, but he doesn't have the time to do it. He's an influencer within the decision-making process. He may not necessarily be the exact decision-maker, but he is going to be the person that leads our leads the charge and that we partner with and ultimately who our main connection is going to be throughout the relationship. The keywords and hashtags that we use that this we've been thought leaders for forever. BTI kind of pioneered the managed service provider model back in the 90s and has had employees working from home since 1999. So it's, this isn't a new concept to us. The only problem was we didn't know how to get the word out. It was literally just telemarketing, smile and dial, old school Wolf of Wall Street type stuff without the shadiness. And this hack kind of gave us the, the tools to kind of launch into the 20, 2021 kind of marketing sphere. So our keywords, we anything network related, primarily ransomware, surveillance cameras, cybersecurity, and uh, BYOD. Um, the, the more uh, descriptive, the more exact, the better. But my biggest ahas from BizHack are more personal than they are than they are professional, I guess to say, because I needed to learn to trust the process. I, I was very impatient from the get-go. I thought I knew everything and just kind of ran its course from there. The tools that BizHack gave us with creator mode and SEO are in the keywords and hashtag tools are tremendous. The biggest aha out of all of the things is the SEO. Nobody's ever been able to explain what search engine optimization is and how it relates to everything that you do online better than Cheryl. Now, my favorite thing personally is Cheryl's quote of timely implementation over delayed perfection. Do not get caught in making perfect content. Any content is better than no content. So my the, the next steps for us is we're going to consistently post original content connected and focused on posting topics relative to my verticals in particular, state, local, hospitals and clinics, K through 12 school districts. My team members have their own. That's my focus. And then I'm going to continue connecting and selling which has also been tremendously successful throughout this process. We're BTI and we're here to help. I'm so touched by your comments, Brian. Thank you. Very touched. Thank you, Cheryl. Phenomenal, phenomenal work, Brian. And, um, you know, I got to be honest, you're, um, you're a great person to end on in terms of the case study presentations because you, in the way you sort of embraced learning uh, absolutely exemplify the values that our company believes most in, uh, which is uh, that, you know, it's process over perfection. It's 
timely implementation over delayed perfection. It's the willingness to try new things and to open your mind to new approaches. And um, I want you guys to understand that um, the, the kind of results that uh, Bryant got uh, are not actually at all out of line with the average jumps that we saw in the metrics for all of our participants in the LinkedIn Business Edge. We tracked your so social selling index at the start and end of the course. You had a 20 point jump, 51% increase. Your posts per week, you guys are three times more productive than you were uh, in terms of producing content than you were at the start. And the views that you're getting on average are more than uh, double what you saw before. Uh, your 90 day profile views, how many people are kind of checking you out? That's the core of how you get new business up 50% from the start of the semester and you're appearing due to that SEO 76 times compared to 40 times per week on average, a nearly doubling. These are metrics that matter. These are metrics that put you at the top of your individual fields. Uh, and these are metrics that will translate over time to more leads, more sales and more relationships. So um, now is a chance for us to take uh, our class photo uh, this is our first joint graduation photo. Uh, I love how everybody has their beautiful uh, lead catchers graduation uh, background up and um, we're ready when you are. And, and those of you guys who are visitors uh, and guests and friend and family, please uh, turn on your cameras for this. Now is the moment for you to join uh, our photo and to uh, be a part of this celebration. Awesome. Your, your face is actually gonna be looking a little small because we have a lot of people. So, okay, let's start with the first one. Make sure you open your eyes. Three, two, one. Okay, moving to the next um, screen. Okay, look to your camera. Three, two, one. Awesome. So now the silly one, the crazy one, you know? You made it through the end. So strike a pose. Three, two, one. Okay, wait for it. I need to take the picture for the second one. Okay, three, two, one. Yay, awesome. Thank you. I like those crazy ones too much. <laughs> this is a tradition we've done since back in Miami Dade College. We always have crazy photos. I don't think we've ever used the normal one, uh, but I guess we feel like we need to have them just sort of as a backup. But uh, I don't know. It feels like more to our spirit to have a crazy photo. All right. Well, one of the things that we're actually celebrating today is that we are introducing a few new uh, certified instructors into our mix starting with Michael Pace, certified marketing coach. Uh, you've been an extraordinary uh, find, uh, graduate of our program, who's now uh, become one of our most valued uh, coaches and instructors. Michael Pace, welcome to the BizHack teaching family. Carolyn Quinton, uh, our inaugural LinkedIn marketing coach. Uh, you uh, have embraced the challenge of learning LinkedIn uh, as a selling and lead generation tool and thought leadership tool. And, and you have been an amazing uh, uh, value add to our team and, and you've helped us in so many ways. Uh, thank you for, for joining us. Thank you for taking the risk uh, of your time and effort. We know how busy you are. And uh, Cheryl Cattell. Cheryl has been a marketing instructor of ours for several years, but this is the first course she's ever led with BizHack. She's actually a very seasoned instructor and we are lucky to have you now as a certified lead instructor. Congratulations, Cheryl, uh, to join the pretty small and exclusive lead instructor family. And speaking of lead instructors, I'm gonna actually welcome my colleague, uh, Alex Oliveira, to do the certificate ceremony for the lead catchers. Alex is the founder and CEO of Predict Media and he has been uh, a lead instructor of ours now uh, for a number of cohorts. He'll be teaching us again, teaching again in the course starting on Monday. Alex, before we go through the certificates, did you want to say a few words about your experience leading the class? 
Um, yeah, about the class, but just today in general, you know, listening to all these businesses, having worked with businesses for 20 years, it's always inspiring because when you're in the presence of people who really want to succeed and really want to apply themselves and be lifelong learners, because that's what it takes to be a good digital marketer and a successful business owner. It's lifelong learning. The economy is always changing. Consumer behavior is always changing. And what I see is everyone's disposition to want to learn. And so as long as you guys want to do that, you're going to be successful. So I'm very inspired and just happy to be here and, and just honored to have been a part of the whole uh, course and, and process. So congratulations to everyone. All right, let me call up the graduation certificates. It's been a heck of an honor to get to know you, my friend. I, uh, I admire the heck out of you uh, as a father uh, and as an entrepreneur and a fellow traveler on this uh, kind of wily world of digital marketing. Thank you. Okay, Alex Sellers, congratulations. Allison Raymond. Amy Williams, get that jerky. <laughs> Antoinette Vanisek. David Cadenas. John Wood. Fernando de los Santos. Congratulations. Gary Ireland. Laura Ballesteros. Millie Herrera, Molly Malone, Omar Sanchez, Robert Sir, Sandy Louth. All right. Congratulations to the lead catchers for an amazing, hardworking semester. And now uh, the Linkfluencers, our first. LinkedIn Business Edge graduates, and I want to welcome the extraordinary uh, Cheryl Cattell. Uh, Cheryl, uh, when we uh, six months ago decided to make you our first ever uh, course co-creator, uh, I did not have any inkling of how amazing a uh, journey it was going to be with you. You are a, uh, a fierce talent, a, a brilliant marketer and educator, and also a certified life coach. Uh, and so, uh, you know, I got to say, it is funny how marketing and therapy seems so parallel uh, often for many of our participants, myself included. Cheryl Cattell, you want to say a few words about the Linkfluencers before we uh, do the certificates? Yes, um, I would. I I just want to acknowledge the, the, the class that I got to co-create this, this course with. Um, you guys really kept me on my toes. Um, fortunately for me, uh, doing this course was sharing something I'm very passionate about. I, uh, I just, I have so many connections on LinkedIn that mean the world to me. And to be able to share that ability to create your world in LinkedIn and actually generate business and become a thought leader and recognize, it was really, it was like sharing a passion for me. Um, but I think the first class always, you know, it's like, wow, what, you know, what are the expectations? And I have to say, I worked my ass off during this class, trying to make sure that everybody got what they needed, that everybody felt like they, you know, got something of value from the class. And, and for that, I think it made a better class and made me a better teacher. So thank you. I'm so honored to have worked with each one of you. So. All right, let's get these babies going. Let's get these certificates handed out. Absolutely. So let me. Uh... All right, we've heard from him. Bryant Brackett, congratulations, certificate of completion. Cami Moore, woohoo, way to go, Cami. Claudia Panfill, congratulations. Dave Smith. <laughs> I love Dave. Oh, yeah, I love Dave. <laughs> Dominique Guevara. Certificate of completion for Janine Williamson. And the world needs your thought leadership. Thank gosh. Indeed. Um, and certificate of completion for Michelle Rupp and her whole team. I got to meet her whole team. It was exciting. And then we have some certificates of participation 
So Nestor Nara, Certificate of Participation, actually, and Ray Harris was a certificate of completion by the hair on his chinny chin chin. He doesn't have any on his head, so it had to be his chin. Um, certificate of Participation, Sandy Fenn, my, my former boss. And another certificate of completion, congratulations to Tino Hales. And as well as Teresa Leftenant. All right, and another certificate of completion for Vanessa Parker. And for Vera Kolesnik, so congratulations. And then finally, I think a certificate of participation for Yanni Dangpa. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you, guys. Uh, congratulations for uh, that. And now um, we're going to give uh, our Biz Hacker Award winner our highest honor. So one of our core values is the company. And we practice this internally, and we encourage our participants, require them to practice it in our courses, is learn by doing. Adults learn by doing. We are experiential learners. If we do not apply our learnings in our life, we're too busy with family and business. We're going to forget it. But if we apply it, we're going to retain it and we're going to use it moving forward. And the statistics on this are pretty clear. Uh, adult learning researchers have found that you retain 90% of what you apply in your life within one to two days of first learning it. That's why we build the courses the way we do. That's why they're so intense. You cannot learn how to be a power lifter without lifting weights. And BizHack's value is that we offer high paced, high impact training for business people who like to embrace new challenges, who are willing to work your tails off, who continuously experiment and try new things and who treat failure as an opportunity to learn, which you heard Bryant Brackett talk about that. These ideas of constant experimentation, embracing the new, fishing with a spear rather than a net, patience and perseverance, and this goal of never stop learning, and the willingness to dare to fail gloriously is what we call the biz hacker mentality and what we celebrate with this award. This award is given by your peers to the classmate who best exemplifies this mentality. And for the Digital Marketer's Edge, the Biz Hacker Award winner is Sandy Luth. Congratulations, Sandy. Thank you so much. And it's Sandy Louth, just so y'all know. Thank you all so much. You're welcome, Sandy. Uh, the Biz Hacker Award winner, uh, we had a tie in the LinkedIn Business Edge. Uh, and the first award goes to Vera Kolesnik. Congratulations, Vera. And the second Biz Hacker Award winner is Bryant Brackett. Bryant, congratulations. Uh, you really do exemplify the Biz Hacker mentality and everything we strive uh, to celebrate uh, in our training and in our coaching. Congratulations. I wanted to let you guys all know that applications are open for both the next cohort of the Digital Marketers Edge. It starts on Monday, uh, cohort 20, and the LinkedIn Business Edge cohort 2 starts on November 2nd. Would love to have you uh, or anyone you know join us for this program. The way to get to apply is just go to our website, bizhack.com. Uh, slash apply dash now. And there's this quick form that you can fill out. Uh, we do have, we are by application only for our courses. We want to make sure that the course is a good fit for your goals. Uh, and we frankly want to make sure that you're a good fit for the kind of community that we're trying to build here at BizHack. In the Digital Marketers Edge, the average participant had a return on ad spend of $29 for every $1 in ad spent within three months of completing our program. We've given out nearly $200,000 to minority and women-owned businesses in scholarships that help defray a portion of the cost of this course. And we have currently 10 seats left uh, in the cohort that's starting on Monday. And we would love for you or someone you know to fill one of those seats. We limit the number of seats because the coaching is very personalized. 
We also offer as a gift to the community a free series of sessions on uh, digital marketing free of cost to the community. We have our next set coming up. We're doing this in partnership with the Office of the Mayor of Miami-Dade County and their Strive 305 initiative. These master classes are going to cover holiday marketing with Ricardo Barris, lead generation strategies that work with Alex Oliveira, and the top 10 digital marketing trends for 2022 with Cheryl Cattell and Jay Berkowitz. Uh, a special thanks to the Office of the Mayor for helping us promote these. Our goal is to get a thousand people uh, to register and come to these. We're about a third of a way to our goal, and I know we're going to make it. Help us spread the word. Go to try.bizhack.com slash MC series. You can sign up for it there. You can also share that link with anyone who's interested in top notch BizHack certified instructors giving master classes in areas that they ex excel in. Uh, if we could go ahead and launch a poll again, I wanted to invite you guys to give the gift of BizHack. If there is anyone in your life that you know of who you think could benefit, would you be willing to refer, make a referral for us? We'll hop on a call. We'll talk about who they are. Uh, we'll take care of them. And we also want to ask you, how did this graduation celebration go? This was the first time we've ever done it as a, a dual celebration. And we would just like your quick thumbs up, thumbs down. Did this work for you as participants? Did you feel honored and celebrated? Did you enjoy seeing some of your class, uh, some classmates from another program uh, present their learnings? Uh, we would love to hear your feedback on that. Um, and Marianne uh, or Lilia, have we been able to launch that poll? Yes, I just launch it, just don't click and pull, and yeah. uh, everything's going to be okay. Okay, good. <laughs> so uh, while that poll is running, we're going to go through our last uh, group of thank you gifts, and then we're going to wrap up uh, with a musical surprise. Um, and uh, here we go. So a $50 gift card from Pool Scouts of South Miami. It's a, a potless plant made by hand. I love that uh, from Omar Sanchez. And the winner is? It's Millie Herrera. Congrats, Millie. We have a build your confidence with money one hour consultation with Teresa from Reinventing Her. And the winner is? Vanessa Parker. Vanessa. We have a bar of soap. For each participant of the course, boy, don't you uh, fear, feel uh, happy that you are a lead catcher. That's from Rustic Country Soaps, um, Sandy Luth. And uh, congratulations, all of you, to uh, receiving uh, an amazing bar of soap with a special request. Sandy, I would love to get a bar of soap as well if you have one for me. Finally, uh, Quinton and Associates Conflict Dynamics Profile Assessment and Debrief, uh, a $400 value. And the winner is? Brian Brackett. Oh, nice. Brian. A free one-hour visual brand audit from Tatiana McDaniel, one of our instructors. And that, the winner is Sandy Love. Sandy. A confidence factor assessment session from Reinventing Her. Uh, Teresa Lieutenant. The winner is Vera Kolesnik. All right. And uh, I wanted to say a word about Ricardo Barris before we launch into the musical su surprise. Uh, Ricardo was here a little earlier. He had to step away. Uh, Ricardo is an extraordinary uh, contributor to the business community. Uh, he also happens to be uh, a musical artist. And so with that, here is our musical surprise. The original song, Hats Off to You, written for BizHack, written for you all uh, by Ricky Anthony, Ricardo's artistic name. You can actually find his music uh, on iTunes. This arrangement was by Ricky Anthony and his partner, Nick D. Uh, and uh, Lilia, we're ready when you are. Oh, 
Cross the finish line and all that you did this somehow. While on the journey there were many things you didn't know. How it's because of your openness to learn. Look what you've earned, yeah. And as you go, go, letting the seas are all the lessons learned to reap what you sow. Now be afraid to tell and share to everyone you know with complete openness to learn. They too can learn. We lift our hats off to you and you and you for doing all the things you needed to do instead of giving up for all you fought through and through. So proud of you. Hats off to you. I just want to say thank you guys for being a part of the BizHack experience. Uh, I look forward to connecting with all of you uh, to help you continue to grow and build your business and transform your career and transform your lives. That is why we're here. That's what we're about. Uh, and this is really just the beginning of a journey together. Thank you, everybody.